just in multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs will be approved in Q1 of 2024. Guys, smash the like button. Let's get this information out there to as many people as possible. Multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs will be approved in Q1 of 2024, paving the way for institutional investment. Understand, this isn't Altcoin Daily telling you this before anybody else tells you this again. This isn't me saying this. This is from an 840 billion global bank standard chartered in a research note that they just sent out to their investors. This is what they're telling their investors. Guys, it's coming. And so far, every Bitcoin dip keeps getting bought. Bullish. It seems like BlackRock is pumping Bitcoin. BlackRock is buying Bitcoin. Why? A lot of Bitcoin buying pressure seems to be coming from Coinbase. Coinbase is the official custody partner of BlackRock and many of the spot ETF applicants. This could be BlackRock. I wish more people could see this. I wish more people could understand this. This cycle is so much different from every other cycle in so many different ways. We have multiple mainstream presidential candidates going, doing media, doing interviews, talking about Bitcoin. I want to remind you, Robert Kennedy Jr. is promising no taxes on Bitcoin and backing the US dollar with Bitcoin. Does he have a strong chance? Not a strong chance, but he's moving the conversation in this direction. And only second to actually getting these policies done is Robert Kennedy actually understanding why Bitcoin. Listen to him on What Bitcoin Did podcast explaining why he believes in Bitcoin. Now, he's going to talk about the trucker protests in Canada, but understand under a different administration, he could be talking about Black Lives Matter protests. The political affiliation of the protests do not matter. It's governments abusing power if they don't like what you're saying. I didn't pay any attention to the trucker strike in Ottawa yeah. when I saw the Canadian government go in and um, and shut down all the truckers' bank accounts. These were people who were never convicted of a crime, never charged with a crime, but they used, the Canadian government used AI, facial recognition, and surveillance technologies to identify the participants in a protest that was peaceful, that was like Woodstock. It was, uh, it was, you know, they were exercising a right that we all assume that we have, which is the right to petition, um, uh, to assemble. And they were, their bank accounts were shut and they couldn't pay their mortgages. They couldn't pay their, uh, the gas, the, the petroleum for their, their, the diesel for their trucks. They couldn't leave. They couldn't buy food for their children. You know, I had a, I have a friend who, who's a, one of those truckers who was threatened with, with jail because he couldn't pay the court ordered alimony. So, um, I, I recognize at that point that, um, that transactional freedom was important as freedom of expression because we have freedom of expression, but if the government then can punish you by shutting down your bank accounts with even charging, without even charging you with a crime, they have the ultimate power to turn us into slaves. And now that the dust has settled a little bit, I just wanna make sure everybody's up to date on what's going on with CZ and Binance and what's going on now with Sam Bankman-Fried. So this is what's going on with Binance and CEO CZ. Binance has agreed to pay fines totaling $4.3 billion, the seventh largest of this kind in US history. CZ's plea deal may preserve the company's ability to operate. So CZ's kind of taking one for the team leaving. So Binance, what he built and what he still owns the majority of shares of can still function. CZ will retain majority ownership of Binance. CZ will not be able to hold an executive role at the company. CZ could face up to 16 months in jail. Again, a lot of people comparing this to Arthur Hayes and BitMEX, but probably a lot of this will just be house arrest, if not all of it. So we'll see. Sam Bankman Fried is currently in prison, taking part in the prison circular economy with Macro to give us an update on this Tiffany Fong. Apparently, Sam Bankman Fried has begun trading pouches of mackerel as currency in jail. Yes, mackerel, like the fish. According to the Wall Street Journal, Sam is learning the fundamentals of prison economics because apparently he traded four pouches of mackerel, or mac as they're called in jail, to pay a fellow inmate to cut his hair ahead of his criminal trial. 
Smoking and tobacco products have been banned in federal jails, so apparently pouches of mackerel have replaced cigarettes as a federal jailhouse currency. Inmates purchase pouches of preserved mackerel in commissary to pay for services from one another. Apparently, a pouch of mackerel fillets currently costs $1.30, up 30% from $1 in 2020. Bill Baroni, a prison consultant, told the Wall Street Journal that when Sam moves from jail to a federal prison, he will likely bring his mackerel packets with him, and also added that the Mac currency system is far more stable than crypto. And now, for the first time in a long time, I can finally be bullish on this altcoin. Ton. And finally, we have a greater understanding of the trajectory and the roadmap for this project particularly because of this. This is the huge news, a huge strategic investment from Animoca Brands investing in Ton Network, becoming the largest validator there is on this network currently. And I know you're thinking, what? I thought that was like Telegram coin, whatever happened with that. I thought the SEC was suing them. Well, like what's up with that? Ton was initially developed by Telegram, but a subsequent legal battle with the United States SEC saw the messaging app abandoned its development efforts in May 2020. See, this is probably what you last heard. Did you know a small group of open source devs then took over the project, which led to the establishment of the Ton Foundation in May 2021? And now that we know that Animoca Brands is now kind of behind this, it's, it is a big deal. Web3 investment firm Animoca Brands is set to become the largest validator on the open network Ton blockchain, and it plans to deliver blockchain-based games to the messaging applications Telegram's 800 million users. So what led to all this? Well, Animoca Brands has conducted extensive market research on Ton's wider ecosystem, focusing on the platform's ability to drive cryptocurrency and GameFi adoption. The firm plans to strategically support Ton Play, a gaming infrastructure project based on the Ton blockchain. The infrastructure allows gaming applications to be built on Ton and launched on Telegram, and even allows for porting existing web-based games to the messaging app. Ton Play will enable developers to deliver games to some 800 million Telegram users through its web application and the mobile apps Play Deck Bot, which allows users to browse a catalog of mobile games. The Annie Moki Brands co-founder, Yat Siu, said that the investment in Ton is aligned with the firm's efforts to drive adoption and the transition from Web 2 to Web 3. Quote, taking part in the network's validation underlines our faith in the successful realization of the vision behind the Ton project as it looks to bring Web 3 into the mainstream. He added that Animoca has identified significant growth potential for gaming within the Ton ecosystem and intends to drive the development of Ton-based games over the next few years. There's so much going on with crypto. Make sure you subscribe. If you're new to the channel, look back on any of our videos from the past three, four months. Literally, many of these are evergreen. The information is still good. And now is the time to really get serious about just your own research and your own plan for this coming bull market. It's going to sneak up on you. Again, check in with us every day. It's going to be a great 2024.